Welcome back, everyone. My name is Eltamar, and we are going to be continuing our Let's Play of Grim Dawn. Where we left off last time, we were just in town selling some stuff. I also have a few pages of things to read really quickly before we get started. Again, the Beacon of Hope. I have seen firsthand the cleansing power of the Flame of Kaiman and will never falter in my belief. Our force is outnumbered by horrors beyond comprehension. It was then that I first laid eyes upon him. Like a shining beacon in the chaos, Father Kaiman charged into battle. He was as a flaming wind scorching a forest left to grow wild for too long, cutting down the twisted and reviled roots that seek to strangle this world of light. I knew that day that he would be the one to lead us from this horror. It is his righteousness that burns through the darkness of this world and banishes the evil. I will not fail him. Blade Maiden, Sendra, Ambry. Blood for Cathan. I tried to console them, tell them everything would be alright. Their eyes go wide with fear as I find the spot between the ribs and push the blade in. They always cry and it makes me a little sad. They do not yet understand. I watch the blood as it flows down their naked legs into the large basin I have placed below their suspended form. Cathan calls for every drop. To ensure I get it, all I begin by making shell cuts. First the legs, then the torso, and lastly the arms. Slowly they struggle... Or their struggle rescinds and they accept their fate. At last they find understanding. Their blood is not theirs, they're only holding it for another, and now it must be returned. To Cathan, to whom it rightly belongs. At least their fear or at last their fear is peeled away, and they are happy to give the blood freely. Devoted servant of Cathan Belor Hind. Oswald Hargate firmly believed that the Aether could be used to create new life. Convinced that he could supersede the gods, Oswald set out to perform his heinous research in a, to this day, unknown location. Though not much is known about the exact details of his research, the results were quite clear. Calling his creation a slith, or its slithering movements and snake-like lower body, Oswald triumphantly announced his findings to the Arcanum Society. The abomination bore the torso of a man and the tail of a snake, though its reptilian snout was unlike either species. Its eyes stared back at you with a hint of human sorrow, though it was clearly a dulled mind, with no indication of a human consciousness, or conscience trapped within the slith body. Those attending were shocked by the blatant disregard for the gods in their domain. Following a brief trial, Oswald was charged with endangering society and was imprisoned for the remainder of his life. The specimen was destroyed and its ashes scattered to the winds. With Oswald behind bars and the slith dead, all believed that the nightmare was over, but they were wrong. The process of collecting blood was so slow it was driving me crazy, so I set up a two-tank system, then rigged the public bathhouse plumbing with a drain switch. Now we can drain the water from the tubs back into the water tank. But when I flip the switch, the drain will go to the second tank, where the blood can then be stored. However, the pulley system with hooks was the crowning achievement. It hides out of sight when not in use, but when we're ready for sacrifices. Saria has provided me with nightshade root to dissolve with the bath salts. Combined with the hot water, it should lull our guests to sleep. Then we drain the water, perform the rites, flip the switch, collect the offerings without spilling a single drop. It took some effort, but I'm proud of what we've set up. It is the first step to mass collections, and we will speed up the process. I cannot wait to tell the others. You are a lunatic. I have been informed by the messengers of the Blood Lord. The Blood Lord? That is quite the name. Messengers of the Blood Lord. The preparations for the resurrection of the, at the Necropolis have begun. Our time to seize the town is now. The Sheriff and his peacekeepers will be dealt with first. With them gone, the remaining civilians will fall in line with our doctrines or be harvested for the ritual. I've already dispatched my loyal blood sword to, the bar to barricade the Dark Veil gates, trapping the refugees inside. They will all fuel the ritual in due time. Once news of this reaches the Black Legion, we will have to be prepared for a counter-assault. I will personally see to converting the frightened and misguided who remain in Dark Vale. If they will not join our cause, then they can dance at the end of a rope and be drained as encouragement for those who have yet to choose. They must all learn that there is no place safer than under the guidance of the Blood Lord. They must come to understand that there is no peace to be found in the lands to the south. Only in the warm embrace of Cathan will we truly be where we belong. Zarya the Carver. We killed her outside. Everything is proceeding as the Blood Lord has intended. My year-long employment as the town's apothecary has earned me the people's trust and I'm now in the perfect position to spread our cause. And for those who refuse to listen to reason, who refuse to embrace the truth that is Cathan, my position as healer has made it an easy thing to take life without arousing suspicion. A bit of powder from the Astrakarn nightshade root mixed with a prescription will put anyone to sleep for hours. After that, it's a simple matter of retrieving the dissenter and performing the required observances. With each person who returned to Cathan, I carve his sigil into their flesh. For me, it is the most important step in the early stage of the draining ritual. The blood drains quickly from the slit across the carotid artery and drains into the specially prepared oak casks that the carpenter, another blessed by the blood lord, with this task, prepares for me. Not as nice as the glass vessels we have been preparing, but much easier to hide suspicion. Body is stored in a second barrel, 
weighed down with stones, and then sunk to the bottom of the lake. Nearly every death over the last year has added to our tribute, with no suspicion falling on us. But now, with the servants of the false gods arriving at the capital and spreading havoc across the Empire, our time has finally arrived to reveal ourselves from the shadows and usher humanity into the end times. All shall receive the gift of reunification. Sorry, Apothecary of Dust or Dark Veil. Vale. And that's it. That's all we have to read, and we can finally go back to our murdering of these idiots and our, you know, goal of incinerator void feeds. Okay. Not the groper. Still deeply curious about that name. Alright. Oh, it's Gorger. Okay. Well, that's not nearly as shocking or anything. Gorger. I'm slightly disappointed, actually. How do we get there? Must be on the other side. There's also a shrine somewhere up ahead. Down here. More void fiends. That guy flew backwards. That's kind of cool, actually. Come through the door, I dare you. Oh, we are hurt. There's a harbinger here. I really should set the like heart pumping sound to like 80%, because that's when I know I'm being hit. Because like, one hit is 50% of our health. Brawlers, gloves. I can't see what I'm fighting anymore. There's too much loot on the screen. Okay, there's like a lot of things here. Including several rares. I think the Apothecary's Wisdom is going to be something we're going to use. Because we do have another piece of the Apothecary set on. It's the uh, sign. So that's Brawlers, gloves. Bunch of physical damage. Not great for us. Battle plate. Not great for us again. The Spirit Crusher is also not great for us. The Apothecary's Wisdom is very good, though. But what do we want to get rid of? We could get rid of the Aether Lord's Signet. Or the Healing One. No, I think we'll get rid of the Aether Lord's Signet. That 400 health is a lot of health. And that health regeneration is pretty good. We would lose some energy per second. We'd lose some health anyways. We'd lose some Aether damage, but we'd gain 38% to all damage. We'd gain more health back, actually. Alright, we'll do it. How much did that up our damage? 5,000 as opposed to 4,800. Our regeneration went down by 3, but our health went up to 4,000, which is pretty good. Um, I don't actually know if I have any ring-related... Uh, components with me. I put all the rest of them in the... Yeah, it doesn't look like we have any for rings specifically. I put the rest of them in the bank for now because we were carrying around too many of them and it was taking up a vast amount of our inventory space. We do have two pieces of a set, item, or set now, so we have plus 55 defensive ability from our Apothecary's Wisdom and Apothecary's Sign. So that's kind of cool. There's Elnar Doroth, which looks like a Harbinger type thing. What's a Dreadguard? It's a shield that gives... it's a Necromancer shield. Plus one to all skills in Necromancer. We should have been a Necromancer. I found so much Necromancer stuff too. Lately. Bunch of Necromancer offhands and stuff. But then we could be part of Kaimon's Chosen. We would have to be part of the Necromancer squad. Which is actually fine, but... I'm liking Kaimon so far. Um, we're not going to go that way yet. There's some rooms to the south east that we haven't gone yet. I also really want to gain a level. Kill the non 
Another Black Grimoire of Ognifash. We already sold one of those because it's not very good for us. It's okay in general, but... I'm not going to go all the way around just to do that one place. It's not worth it. I think eventually... I wonder if it's ever just worthwhile to turn off... No, probably not. I was going to say turn off rare items altogether, but... I think that there's still some that are pretty... Well, we know that there's some that are pretty good for us. So we did all that, right? Yep. Okay. What's this way? Little path crumbling a wall that leads to a chest. And a dead body. It's not a bad hiding place. Kinda. I thought we got sealed in behind the wall. And died of starvation. But then how was the chest there? Doesn't make any sense. What is that? That is very clearly like a blood vortex. Catholic the Usurper. He is definitely Catholic. He is giant. And we've got a Tempest Sigil, which is a metal. Which is not as good as Apothecary Sign. It's not bad by any means, but still. It's a lovely carpet. Too bad now it's got blood and stuff all over it, probably. Looks kind of looks more like a tapestry they just put down on the ground. That is a very cool blood vortex, though. It might also be some sort of weird soul vortex. Iron Gate, here we go. Alright, we have a boss. And boss music. This is the Sigil of Kazan. It's really kind of hard to see what she's shooting at me. Some intense music playing, though. Although, not all that hard. In all honesty, we could probably just tank this damage and just smash him to death. Is there a second phase, though? There might be a second phase. There's definitely a second type of- Oh yeah, there's definitely a second phase. Now there's Thalanosh the Unraveler. Whatever happened to my bird? It died. Energy, need more energy. Also, ow, that ground stuff kind of hurts. Although, this is not nearly as bad as some of the other boss fights we've done. That kind of hurt, though. Standing in that goo hurt. The red goo, you know. Alright. We got blood for blood. I mean, that was pretty easy. All things considered, that was one of the easier fights we've been in. Is there like a room here with chests? Ornate box? Sure. Nothing else in here? Anything else? Any other chests that we can see? We already got that one. That's nothing. That's just a creepy looking flame. Oh, there's a door. I <laughs> see. I was like, why can't I go past this area? But that makes sense. All right, uh, we're gonna take a look at those those things we got pretty quickly here, though. Let's see. We got Thunder Touch Bracers, which give not a lot for us, honestly. I think ours are better. The inscribed ones we're using are a little bit better. We got lots oh, of brawlers gloves. Black Grimoire. Okay, so the Cerulean Shard. 
I think our other one's better, honestly. Dreadgar, oh, we already knew about that one. Tempest Sigil was the amulet, which ours is way better. That's the Aether Lord's thing. What else do we even get? So Tempest Sigil, we got that. We got the Cerulean Shard, we got... Thunder Touch Bracers. So that's really it. Nothing super exciting, honestly. Oh well. We go straight that way, so that's not north. It's closer. There we go, that's north. There's flesh warp trolls here. We're supposed to return to Homestead, but I'm kind of hoping we find, like, a rift gate here somewhere. Those things are immune to freezing. Well, some of them are. Ow. They also stun when they hit. What are these chill main ragers? Maybe if we stick to the road, we'll find a rift better, or easier. I think I see a rift up here, yep. I also want to gain a level really quickly though. On our way to the rift, perhaps. There's a lot of dead things around this rift, let's just find some things to kill. Like this giant camp should level us up, there we go. Some of these things are very much immune to cold. Like the cold ones. I mean, that's pretty obvious, I guess. Uh, Alright, what do we have for Arcanist skills here? So we are at 12 for proliferation. We need... I have no idea how many more until we're done Maven Sphere. I think it's going to have to be close enough. Uh, we need to start buffing up this, though. We're very close to 50. And once we're done that, we can grab. We can start grabbing devastation as well. All right. I guess. Actually, I think we need two more points in this because if I remember correctly, we have a plus two to mavens from this thing. And then we have plus two from the sword, meaning we have plus four to all skills, which means actually these are probably not topped out either. These need four points in total. I think, which is slightly disappointing, that's fine, we'll figure that out later. Also put a couple more points into physique for some more hit points, and we're going to head back to town and turn in that quest. This might be a slightly shorter video today, or at least for this particular one, but we'll do more today as well. I just have to get a couple things done during today, and then we can do some more recording. Why do you have such a grim look on your face? What happened out there? Karaza's or Karaz lies dead, but I found some disturbing information on Let's him. Let's see it. I'll be damned. If the bastards pull this off, we may as well slit our own throats. This scenario is well beyond my pay grade, or would be if I were getting paid. You will need to bring this to Creed's attention immediately. The Inquisitor? I've already informed Creed of your recent actions. He is most eager to speak with you. Show him what you've shown me. He needs to see this. I'll speak to him at once. If we go to our quest log, what exactly do we have to do for Sacred Ashes? Sacred Ashes? Oh, right, the Archon's Burial Chamber. That's way up north. Right, right, right. Okay, that makes sense. You're here. Good. We have much to discuss. I found these notes on Karaz. I've heard of this it has been performed only once before. My memory serves me. The cults were, shall we say, not good. The cult must not be allowed to see this through. We must make haste to Fort Icon at once. Will you join us? Uh, sure. Where do you need me? the cultist ranks scattered, we can once again reconnect with the main legion force to the north. And just in time, too. Based on the information you've brought back from Carol's, 
We need to immediately send all available forces to the necropolis and stop that ritual. Algrim and I will be leaving shortly with a small contingent of troops. Will you meet us at Fort Icon? It lies just beyond the Astakarn Mountains, through the Dark Vale Gates. See you there. Alright. That's going to be it for now. Like always, if you have any suggestions or comments, please leave them below. Otherwise, I'll see you next time. Take care.